inspired me to do the full Ironman was my dad. Uh, he was diagnosed with brain cancer 10 years ago and he did 31 marathons, nine Ironmans in the course of undergoing brain cancer. And at the end of May, he was bedridden and passing. And I always wanted to run and feel what he felt when he did it. And I emailed the race director and they let me in. And I had two months of training and I did it in all honor of him and finished. And the Invincibles, there was a group about 300 that ran for my dad for the Colfax Marathon. I think it was about two years ago. And we um, all believed that he was such an inspiration to us. So we wanted to show him what an inspiration he was and how much he pushed us to be a better human being and pushed us to be athletic and to continue moving along even throughout the trials of life. And to this day, people still know who we are. I designed the shirts for them. Um, they have a Superman V on them because my dad said he was not Superman, but everybody around us thought he was Superman. Um, and so we just live to run in, in his name and he lives on in us always. On the back of the shirt says, "We will. I will not just survive, I'll be stronger than before. And he did that every day. He not only survived, but he PR'd at a marathon at 303 with cancer, which is unremarkable. Even, I mean, I will never be able to run that fast, but he showed that he he is stronger mentally. And even though he did pass, it was all, it was a mental game and that's all he needed to show anyone. Well, for me, my dad's inspiration was just my whole life. Running, I grew up doing with him. And then I ended up getting diagnosed with back problems and had a spinal fusion. And I don't think I would be running without him again. So watching him struggle through brain cancer and going with radiation and chemo day after day, month after month, uh, and watching him run, that was what actually got me to run again. I would never have thought to run a marathon or do an Ironman or anything without him. To go through back stuff, it was my dad that, had, that was the inspiration. I was told I would never run again. I was told that I might never walk again. So it was all up in the air. But um, because of my dad and watching him struggle, and he got told the same thing, that he would never run again and he qualified for Boston. For, to see that, it was what caused me to be able to get up and run every and run again without um, pain. And I, I think I was uh, two years out when I did my first marathon after a spinal fusion, and four years out I did my first Ironman. Uh, my dad was scared about the water too when he started doing Ironmans, and I had the same fear. And I don't like wetsuits, and I know you're supposed to, or you're supposed to be supposed to wear one in a race. And my first race was just a sprint, and the day before the race, I picked up a wetsuit. I rented it and saw my dad the day of the race. He just got done brain surgery, brain surgery a couple a week or two before, so I was very shocked to even see him there. And he looked at me and he goes, are you gonna wear your wetsuit? And I said, yes. He goes, well, don't, you've never trained in it. And I'm like, dad, I rented it. I spent the money on wearing it. And I got up out of the swim and my dad looked at me and he goes, where's your wetsuit? I said, it's in the water, dad. And <laughs> he just laughed and I laughed. And I, I ended up pulling the wetsuit off probably two minutes into the swim. And I did the same thing again for the half iron man. I wore the wetsuit, even though he said not to do it. And I pulled it off in the swim again. <laughs> so, during the Ironman, um, there was highs and lows. My dad always told me you'd feel the most alive and the most dead at the same time. And I didn't understand what that meant until I was doing the race. During the race, I, I felt dead because I was exhausted physically, mentally, and I, I almost quit. But I would talk to my dad and say, I know you got through this, just get me through this. And, I felt so alive at the same time as I was pushing my body past physical exhaustion and it, it became a game of mental, men, like it was just all mental for me at that time. I knew I was physically capable of doing it, but mentally I wasn't sure I could do it. So crossing that line was just amazing. I had nothing but joy, nothing but just shock that I did it and I cried and I couldn't stop crying. I don't know if it was because I was happy or if it was just because I was so exhausted at that point but um, I felt so alive and just 
my dad said he defied death every time he crossed that line. And I, I understand now how he felt like he defied death because he just did something that 1% of the population will ever attempt to do. I am doing Ironman Boulder this year again. And then on top of that, I got signed up for a 100 mile run. Was <laughs> not planning on it, but my friend who's doing Ironman with me decided that she was doing the 100 mile run and decided I should do it with her. So now I'm using an Ironman as a training for a run. So, and it's really one month after it. So the Ironman's in August, the 100 miles in September. I want people to know that anything's possible, that you can go from sitting on the couch one day to running a marathon. You just have to push yourself and push your mind and never let somebody tell you you can't do something. Um, don't let a doctor, don't let a therapist or whoever say, I can't, you won't be able to run again because that's not true. It's all about the mental game of it and don't ever give up on your dreams and your aspirations because that's what, who, that's what makes you you.